Hi guys, it's Daryl, and today I want to talk to you about something so critical, so important. I pray you'll share this with other people as well, because, you know, the modern American church is failing, and that's why we see evil overtaking our country. It's very obvious. Once again, the, the, the buck stops with the church, and I'm not talking about a building or an organization. I'm talking about us, you, me, brothers and sisters in the Lord who love the Lord and want to serve Him. And, you know, today I want to talk to you about the two biggest things that are failing or, or reasons why the modern American church is failing. One of them is discipleship and the other is share the gospel. Uh, I want to just play in the background as we talk today uh, this video because, and I'll put the link to it, we used it in our uh, Per Stop television show. and. It's made by Foursquare Church, I believe, and it's one of the best videos I ever saw that kind of encapsulates what is the church. And so I share with you today, maybe you can keep an eye on the video as we watch, but we're also going to get into God's Word. And, you know, one of the most famous scriptures in all the Bible is Mark 16, 15, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. I just want you to think about something for a second. If you're a mother or a father, you could really relate to this. Uh, even if you're not, I'm sure you can relate to this as well. But... You know, before we die, we leave a last will and testament. Why do we do that, right? We want people to know what our dying wish was. We want them to know how we want whatever uh, possessions we've accumulated on this earth to be divided so that the kids don't fight with each other. Um, and many other reasons. Maybe we want to just be a blessing to other people and so on. So, but it's important, right? And if you were on your deathbed and you had the opportunity to share one last piece of wisdom, one common phrase or one set of instructions to your children about life and about how to go through life, how to be successful in life or how to know God or to make him known and so on. Uh, you know, you'd choose your words pretty carefully, right? I mean, you would, uh, when you think about it, you would say, well, you know, what is the most important things I can leave for them? What is the legacy I can leave them? And so, um, I want you to consider for a second, right before Jesus ascends into heaven, he's already died on the cross, he was laid in the tomb, he rose three days later, hallelujah. And, you know, he's met with the disciples, he's talked to them, he's eaten with them, he's shared with them, many other witnesses saw him alive and well. So, this is his last set of instructions that he gives them before he, he, he goes uh, to heaven and to ascend to the right hand of the Father. And so, I, I, obviously, Matthew 16, 15, we, everybody knows that, right? But uh, Matthew 28, 18, verse, uh, 18 through 20, actually kind of spells that out even better. It says, Jesus came, now keep in mind, this is right before he ascends into heaven, and spoke to them, saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth, right? So now he's conquered the grave, he's conquered sin, he's conquered death, he's conquered Satan, right? And then, so he gives them instructions. He says, go, the, the, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, which, sidebar real quick, uh, for those that say there's no such thing as the Trinity, well, just ask them, you know, take them to Matthew 28, 19 and say, well, then why did Jesus command us to baptize people in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit? I mean, you know, if there's no Trinity, if there's not three in one, right, then why would he give us three distinct titles, three distinct entities in which to baptize somebody in the name of the Father and the Son, him, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit? So anyways, back on track. So, and then teaching them to observe all the things that I've commanded of you, and lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. That means he's with us here and now as I share this word with you today. And so... I feel like the two biggest things the church is missing are these two last things that Jesus commanded of us. And the fact that they were the last two things he said of everything he taught, every, you know, it's almost like if you're going to give that last dying will and testament to your kids, it's going to be the summation of everything you've learned, all the wisdom you know. Well, how, what can you impart to them in that last thing to say that you love them and, hey, son, daughter, this is, you know, how to live your life. This is uh, what I've learned that's going to help you. Right. And so of all the miracles, you know, all the prophecies fulfilled, all the preaching that uh, you know, and teaching that he did, all the, you know, feeding uh, the 5000 and so much more, raising the sick, the lame, the dead, the blind to see I mean, so many things in a nutshell, in a summation, he's saying, hey, 
man, I have all power and authority. I've overcome Satan, sin, death, the grave, and so much more. I've overcome everything there is to overcome. All power and authority has been given to me, right? In heaven and on earth, right? He's more powerful than any thing Satan can even, any scheme of Satan that he can even ever think of. And so knowing these things, he says, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So Mark 16, 15, Go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature, and make disciples. Those were the two last things that Jesus commanded us to do. And yet, if you look around and you're honest and you objectively look at things, you'll realize the church, for whatever reason, is not making more disciples. They're not equipping and training the church. If somebody is fortunate enough to come into a church that is a good Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church, and a pastor who preaches the gospel unashamedly, right? He, he shares the whole truth and nothing but the truth about our sin and judgment and hell, right? In addition to God's grace and mercy and love and forgiveness and redemption and reconciliation that he offers us through Christ. Uh, if they're fortunate enough to hear that and the Holy Spirit should get a hold of their heart and draw them to the Son and they should repent of their sins and put their full faith and trust in him and be born again, they'd be hard pressed to find a place that would actually disciple them. And that would actually take them under their wing and start to teach them about the invisible spiritual battle that rages all around us. How to put on the full armor of God. How to pray prayers that are powerful and in the center of God's will. And not just vain prayers, not as an afterthought, but as a, you know, it's like the old saying says, don't just plan to pray, pray to plan. And so, uh, you know, so many people I know and so many other Christians I fellowship with are so ill-equipped. They don't know the word very well. They don't know how to rightly divide the word, and therefore they're easily deceived. See, if Satan can't get your soul, he gets you busy, right? He gets you doing things that are counterproductive, and one of the most counterproductive things we do is not share our faith. It's not share the gospel, not share the good news. I, I often refer back to a, a video of uh, Penn, I think it was, of Penn and Teller, uh, who's an atheist, a very staunch atheist, and saying that how much would you have to hate somebody not to share the gospel with them? I mean, if you really believe what you say you believe and that somebody without Christ is going to spend a conscious eternity in the lake of fire where they'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth and all these things, how much would you have to hate someone not to share that with them, not to warn them, not to give them a fighting chance for heaven and salvation? So Christ commanded us to go and share the gospel, yet do you know nine out of ten Christians don't? 90% of the Christians aren't doing what the master commands, which concerns me when you consider other things that Jesus mentions in scripture about finding the wicked, lazy servants. Take Revelation and the lukewarm Laodicean uh, church. You know, he's going to spew them out of their mouth. Many of the other churches he rebukes says, hey, you're going to miss out. You're not going to be given the white robe, not be uh, entering the kingdom of heaven when I come. And so, so many warnings all throughout scripture that Jesus gave us that, man, the master better find you doing his will when he returns. And so uh, I find it sad, actually kind of heartbreaking that uh, everywhere I go, places I travel, churches I've attended and seen, uh, rarely are anybody in that congregation sharing their faith on a regular basis. Uh, they're far from being a nobody telling everybody about somebody who can save anybody. Um, but even more importantly, even those that are sharing their faith and trying to get them plugged in to a church uh, in local fellowship, unfortunately, they're not being discipled. They're not being taught the ways of God, the will of God, the word of God, and so much more. So if that's you, you know, if you're part of one of those churches that uh, they're not discipling people, right? They don't know about discipleship. They're not um, teaching God's word and, and getting them plugged in. I'm not talking about just attending church on Sunday. You know, one hour message on Sunday does not a disciple make. So uh, I'm talking about somebody coming alongside of you that brings a, an older, mature, you know, in fact, even the world knows how this works. In business, you have mentors, you have bosses, you have leaders that teach you and tell you how to do the job and train you and equip you to do the job. Unfortunately, we just don't see that in the modern American church. Uh, we see that even in AA programs, right? You get the 12 step program, but one of the uh, parts of being a part of a, a, a rehab uh, program, most any rehab program, is having a sponsor, you know, somebody that's older and wiser and been longer or sober, and therefore they can uh, mentor you and disciple you, okay? And unfortunately, we're not seeing that in the modern American church. So if that's you, if that describes you, if 
you know, you're saying, wow. In fact, I had a guy just the other day say, man, more than anything, I want to, I want to visit people in the hospital. I want to go to their funerals. I want to, you know, preach the word. I want to, I want to you know, do all these things that pastors do. And I said, what's stopping you? You know, and his answer wasn't really shocking or surprising. It was like, well, I don't have, I mean, I've never gone to seminary. I don't really, you know, I'm not qualified. Nobody's ordained me. And I got to thinking, well, where does this ordination really come from? It comes from God. And when you look all throughout scripture, you see so many people that God used. They weren't learned wise people. Take Peter, the rock by which Christ built the church. He was a fisherman, right? He wasn't some learned wise person. Um, so don't think for a minute, you know, he, you know, won't use you. God will use you to reach other people. Start by sharing your faith. Just go out and start sharing the gospel with other people. You don't have to go halfway around the world and spend thousands of dollars on a missions trip. You got lost people right next door. I mean, honestly, someday when you die, what would you what would you think if, if Jesus, who said, unless you profess me before men, neither will I profess you before the Father, said, hey, you never shared your faith. Hey, I'm going to let you in because you put your full faith and trust in me. You repented of your sins. But you were derelict to duty. You didn't do your job that I commanded you. I left you two simple instructions before I left. Go into all the world, preach the gospel, make disciples, teach others the way I've taught you. And you didn't do either, right? So before you enter, I want you to just turn around for a second. See that lady sinking into hell right there, screaming, right? In torment and pain. Yeah, that's your next door neighbor, right? She lived next door to you for 15 years. You never said one word to her about me, you know? Hey, see that guy? Right there, sinking into hell, screaming, wishing, filled with regret because he's not in her in heaven. Yeah, that's the guy you sat next to on an airplane for four hours and you never once shared what I did for him. I mean, honestly, think about that for a second. Jesus, who gave up everything, left his throne in heaven to come down to earth, live a humble, you know, holy life so that he, God could make him who knew no sin sin for us, that we may be made the righteousness of Christ. He sacrificed everything, including his own life, to save our souls. He has the cure for everything that ails us, and yet all we got to do is tell people about it, and we're not doing that. I can only imagine why God would be angry, right? I mean, I don't. it doesn't shock and surprise me that God would be like, hey, you wicked, lazy, lukewarm, good-for-nothing servant, right? I mean, do you even know the word Lord? What it means originally in the Greek, Kyrios, you know, it means slave. It means he bought you at a price that you're his. He purchased you. That's why he said, hey, why do you call me Lord and do not what I command? So please, for your sake, for God's sake, for Christ's sake, right? For the lost sake, get up, get out, get busy leading, liberating, and, and, and launching new Christians into the world to preach the gospel to every creature and start in your own backyard. Be faithful in little and he'll bless you with more. So don't think you have to go to, you know, seminary. Don't think you have to be a picture perfect preacher to love somebody enough to share your faith with them, to share the solution to their sin, to judgment, to hell, that they too may come to know and love and trust Jesus like we do. Hey, this is Daryl Rundus hoping and praying that this word encouraged you today and Letting you know I thank God for you.